say hello. The topic of this presentation is teacher's role in supporting collaborative learning. So during this talk I go through teacher's role both before the collaborative learning situation, during the learning process and, and also in the end or, or after the learning, le learning, collaborative learning process. And this is basically how I, I define teachers' duties during the collaborative learning process. Because uh, like we have learned in, in earlier courses and in the previous lecture in this course, the emphasis in collaborative learning is in the process, learning process, and the interaction uh, between learners. So it's really learner-centered way of studying and learning, and teacher's role during the learning process is to be more like observer or facilitator. So the most important um, part or most important duties for teachers is what happens before the actual collaborative learning situation. So the planning phase is the most essential one and in practice also the most time consuming one. But of course the learners uh, need support during the collaborative learning process and teacher has to be all the time aware what the learners are doing and, and how they are proceeding. And of course also the assessment is a, a big part of teacher's role, although in collaborative, collaborative learning assessment responsibilities are shared between teacher and individual learner and group of learners. Uh, the, um, in order to get collaborative learning to be successful, teacher has to plan or script carefully beforehand the collaborative learning situation. Mm -hmm. These collaborative scripts or in more general, generally speaking, pedagogical scripts support productive collaborative learning by structuring and specifying those activities and responsibilities that students are expected to do during their group work. Pedagogical scripts are aiming at shaping the way learners are interacting with each other in the group and engaging learners such discourse that it's associated with high-level collaborative learning like committing them into the argumentation and negotiation processes. And also these pedagogical scripts are providing external support for the group of learners to clarify those type of activities and timing of conducting those activities in order to attain the task at hand. And there are many different kinds of scripts uh, and scripts can support or enhance different types of activities and processes. Scripts can promote cognitive processes like explaining, asking, summarizing, or metacognitive processes like planning, monitoring, uh, controlling, evaluating, and so on, or social processes like like committing students or learners into some um, functional roles, for example. Uh, so when the a teacher starts to plan collaborative learning situation or course, for example, which is based on the idea of collaborative learning, there are various things um, included in the script which has to be defined. First, of course, teacher has to think that who are actually participating in the collaborative learning. Uh, what, what is, they, what is uh, learners' background knowledge, studying skills, uh, age, and, and so on. Also, teacher has to think that how 
he wants to form the groups. Uh, how big are the groups for, for the tasks? Uh, how heterogeneous they are, for example? And uh, are the learners, uh, are they able to assign into the group themselves? Or, or is teacher defining the, defining the groups and so on? And also the activities. So basically what kind of tasks are learners doing during the course or during the collaborative learning situation, how they are instructed for the, for the tasks um, and so on. And also the resources, including the time, that how much time the teacher gives uh, to the learners and uh, how, how loose or how tight is the schedule, for example, and how much freedom the students or learners have to to plan their own work according to the course timetable. And also what other resources are provided by the teacher. Some reading materials maybe, lectures, technological tools and so on. So these are the components of the script. Um, of course it, there is like the teacher can uh, form or plan the collaborative learning situation very carefully and define very strictly all these components but still it doesn't guarantee that uh, the scripting is going to be successful. There are many challenges uh, which the scripting approach can cause. For example Dillenburg and his colleagues are talking about the risk of overscripting, which means that, that the teacher has like two, two uh, given the two detailed instructions and tasks and timetables for learners and it actually can hinder, the script can hinder uh, students' spontaneous collaboration. And also King is mentioning um, the the difference between external and internal script. So students or the group of students might have in their mind already some kind of script or schema how to proceed in collaboration. But the external script provided by the teacher is not in line with that, that internal script which might cause some, some challenges for the group. And also that that uh, normally a teacher provides the same script for all students or all groups of students. But different groups have different needs. They have different skills and knowledge and so on. And kind of one script not necessarily fit for all groups. And that, that uh, requires that, that the script has had to be somehow adaptive, that it can be adapted to the special need of the special groups. But of course this, this adaptive scripting is something that it's really uh, difficult to, to implement in practice, as how you can make the, the script adaptive. This is also kind of a new research area in the field of, of scripting research. Um, here are some concrete examples from, from our LET, uh, earlier years LET courses uh, about different types of scripts. Here are two, uh, the same task, which was kind of brain, brainstorming tasks, but the script was um, different for, for different groups. So we, we, we were provided both the loose script and the tight script. The tight script was in, uh, in forms of prompts, prompts. So the loose script was oh, like, like really generally uh, instructing the, the students towards the task. So it, it was really like wide and, and general and gave students a lot of freedom to actually decide, for example, about the timetable and how they are actually going to proceed. Uh, 
So the instructions were such as during weeks 10 and 11 your task is to decide which tools you are going to use in your teamwork. Write your own suggestion and make the final decision by the end of the week 11. And the same task was given to the other, other group with the more tightly structured or scripted instructions. So first answer individually to following questions during week 10. And then there were like, like question prompts provided. And then in the second phase, your task is to decide the tools which your team is going to use during this course. For this purpose, you meet in Second Life for two hours and discuss about following questions. And again, the question prompts were provided to the students. And at the end of your Second Life session, please write down in the discussion area which two tools you chose. So both the timetable was really detailed, uh, defined very detailed and also the questions and topics they were supposed to, to discuss and negotiate about. The other example is about using epistemic and social scripts. These epistemic scripts refers to such scripts which, which uh, encourage students to work with the knowledge and theories at hand and the social scripts uh, are more like aiming for committing students to such interaction processes that are related to high level uh, collaborative learning. No matter how carefully or how detailed the teacher is defining and planning the script, it's always important that teacher is following and observing the students during collaborative learning processes. Teacher's role uh, is to support both the knowledge co-construction and socio-emotional processes, but also provide some technical tutoring and technical guidance if needed. Uh, related to the supporting knowledge co-construction, it's important that the teacher uh, enhance such interaction between learners that promotes deep elaboration of knowledge and argumentation and negotiation processes. Uh, but it's important to notice that that uh, teacher should intervene into the learning learning process only when needed. Teacher has to be able to give space for students to negotiate and proceed uh, like self directively because it's really like learner centered way of studying and also teacher has to trust that learners are able to proceed but of course if they are stuck or they are uh, progressing or they are not pro pro progressing or not progressing to the right way or towards a task of course in those situations it's important that teacher is uh, intervening and supporting and helping them to get back to the track. Uh, Socio-emotional processes and supporting those means that that for example teacher is supporting groups to to formulate the common ground and uh, supporting group forming group cohesion in the beginning of the grouping process and also if they occur some tensions between group members that that's the teacher participate and try to to help the students to get over of these tensions and challenges and also for the teacher it, it's um, important that teacher allows this like off task discussion because research has evidenced quite strongly that that also these off-task discussions are essential for collaborative learning, especially to the socio-emotional issues. That they are uh, able to talk also about, for example, personal issues and, and things like that, because they affect to the positive group atmosphere, for example, which is an important prerequisite for successful collaborative learning. Um, also, assessment is is one of teachers' role, 
Although, like I mentioned in the beginning, it's also uh, individual learners and groups responsibility to assess and evaluate both the process and the outcome. And here I um, concentrate only to the assessment of the collaborative learning process because like I'm like we know the process in this case is more important than the outcomes and also the, the high quality process predicts high quality learning outcomes. And here are some uh, uh, elements which, which should be taken into account when assessing collaborative learning. Uh, and those elements are participation, interaction, group dynamics and co coordination of group work. Participation uh, includes the assessment of the equality of participation uh, because successful collaborative learning requires that all the group members are committed to the joint task and all group members are participating equally. And also the activity of participation and continuity so that the persons who are actively participating are doing so from the very beginning until the end of the process. Uh, assessing interaction refers to, to, first of all, to the on-task interaction, that how they are proceeding towards the task or towards the goal, how they are negotiating about the, the contents at hand, how reciprocal the discussions are, uh, and how are the group members regulating their own and joint learning processes, how they are, how they are together planning, monitoring, uh, and evaluating collaborative processes, for example. Uh, and also one aspect of ass assessment can, can be the group evaluation of group dynamics, that what kind of ro roles does the group members spontaneously take, how self-directive they are, how self-directively the group proceeds, and how much they need external support and also how they form shared understanding of the task and negotiate about it. And also one aspect of assessment can be the coordination, that how, they, how the group is coordinating the joint learning processes, how they schedule their work, for example, how they share the responsibilities between group members and how the task is divided. And uh, in this slide you see a couple of good references related to the assessment of, of collaborative learning. Okay, thank you for watching this, this video.